Greetings to all of you. We received several comments and uh, questions related to the various quizzes and uh, there appear to be uh, several issues related to some of the questions. We tried to answer them one to one, but some of them require a little more elaboration and it may the questions uh, the answers we gave may or not may or may not fully satisfy the, uh, the participants. What we thought we will present the quiz 1, 2, 4 and uh, try to explain the position that we have taken when we answer we were answering the questions. There were two or three issues. First thing is there were some typos, some statements are typed wrongly. Uh, we realized that in spite of going through it a few times before it reached you, we apologize for those uh, questions. Uh, you have to bear with us. Whereas, uh, some are by way of simple typos, where there are two uh, correct answers to be given only one correct answer was given. So, what happened in the process? The one is uh, the issues related to the marks that uh, are allocated that is one particular uh, issue. The other one it will also confuse the learners when there is a variation between, between what was presented through the slides or through the lectures and what was actually corrected. We thought we will go question by question, item by item in all the three quizzes and try to explain the position that we have taken. So, this is a kind of we can say a kind of a revision also for you to, uh, uh, to kind of for you to review as well as if there are any further questions also you can raise that. In quiz 1, question 1 the it is not that everybody anybody is asking specifically about this we thought we will go uh, with with each question and spend a little time. And there is also another thing that we have uh, tried to build in which caused a little bit of uh, confusion. In some of the questions none of the alternatives given are incorrect ok everything can be justified with respect to that question. Our intention was for the pa participants to identify the most important and most relevant answer for that. That can cause uh, some confusion and people may, may consider a, the position they have taken is more important than the other. Maybe next time when we do that we should not be giving such uh, uh, questions where you can have your own opinions on that. Let us start with this which of the following activities best characterizes a good engineer. Please note that the word is best. So, the best is interpreted in my way or possibly you will interpret in a different way. Solves ill defined problems, good engineer solves ill defined problems, recruits engineering staff, supervises the production line, develop marketing strategies for products. As you can see all the four activities are done by an engineer are likely to be done by an engineer, but here a good engineer the most important thing is he solves ill defined problems. That is uh, what we mean by uh, none of the four options are completely incorrect, but you have to look at what is the one that best characterizes. Coming to the sec second question in quiz 1, in case of professional programs an accreditation agency defines the goals of the programs because all programs should have the same goals. Colleges may not have the ability to identify the goals. Faculty are reluctant to identify as they consider it is restrictive to identify the goals in advance faculty are likely to focus mainly on their internal needs and difficulties in identifying the goals. 
once again none of the statements are completely incorrect. But what happens is I can also tell you by experience in various institutions when you ask a group of faculty they go all over the place in trying to identify what should be the goals of a, uh, a, a professional program. And most importantly everyone will everyone will take a position with respect to th what they personally consider from the subjects they teach should be the goals of the goals of the program. And it is because of this e e actually other accreditation agencies around the world also have gone through this exercise and say the uh, accreditation agency should actually define the goals of a program rather than by the faculty. So, the accepted answer correct answer is faculty are likely to focus mainly on their internal needs and difficulties in identifying the goals. Please uh, uh, that is the reason why the, fo the fourth option was uh, given as the correct one. Question 3 the most important characteristic of an outcome statement is it should be observable and measurable, it should be relevant to the subject of concern, it should be very clear to the student, it should be of value to the student. If you look at again all the four statements are, are, uh, are not incorrect let me put it that way. But among the four again once again you will uh, uh, look at most important characteristic the f that one is it should be observable and measurable. Otherwise even if it is written satisfying all the three other ones still it is not a a good outcome statement. What does the statement survey map and plan layouts for building structures and alignments for canals and roads? Even if someone is not a civil engineer he can easily identify this belongs to civil engineering. Okay. So, first of all it is a statement and then the other thing one can observe is if you look at all the uh, elements in that it all of them cannot be met by a one course. Okay. All these things cannot be done by one course to that extent it is not a course outcome statement that is a last option is ruled out. And then it is also not a program outcome because it is talking very specifically about civil engineering rather than uh, general general requirements of an engineer and it is also not a program educational objective because program educational objective describes what the the type of activities that uh, a graduate should be doing let us say 4 to 5 years after graduation. For example, every civil engineer may not be doing the planning layouts for building structures and alignments he may be doing other something related to soil mechanics or something related to hydraulics. So, it, it is not I cannot write such a thing for program educational objectives. So, what can happen it can only be alternative is it can it is one of the possible program specific outcomes of civil engineering. This is where one problem came most of the engineering programs do not address two of the following characteristics of good engineers. So, we are asking you to identify two of the two of the characteristics. And now having sound knowledge of engineering science and technology this is required, but the programs also most of the engineering programs do a, a address this. So, the first one is not the answer ability to solve well defined problems that is also addressed by practically all the engineering programs. And what is not addressed is awareness of customers needs and market trends with respect to that engineering or ability to work in a team these are the two characteristics not directly addressed by most of the engineering programs. But unfortunately what was pointed out is 
only one option was given rather than two options to be marked. So, to that extent it creates a kind of a confusion and that is why that question is removed from the accounting. Question 6 is it is necessary to consider education philosophy because education is of concern to the society, government insists heavily in education, it is necessary to know what to educate and students wish to know what they are getting trained for. Once again uh, none of the statements are completely inappropriate or wrong, but the very definition of education is uh, why we want to have a philosophy of education is it is necessary to know what to educate unless I know, but on what basis do I decide what to educate that is where the philosophical questions come. So, the most relevant answer is the C. Question 7 once again it was a bit of a typing error instead of constructivism we typed social connectivism that was the uh, my mistake in trying to uh, write it prop in typing it properly and not checking that we are very sorry for that. The other three the learning theory considers learning is a process that is extended over time is not that of cognitivism or constructivism or connectionism, but it is that of social connectivism. It requires a, a, a process that is extended over time then only th the things will be internalized that is the position taken by social uh, constructivism. Question 8 outcome based education become became important because outcome is a different measure of education which is also valid. Policy makers wanted a measure of what students have actually learnt. Measuring attainment of outcome is more difficult than measuring output. Measuring attainment of outcome is easier than measuring the output. So, among the four it is quite clear uh, the we explained in our presentations earlier the it is all started with policy makers policy makers uh, will also decide what kind of funding that would uh, that would be given to in institutions or how to invest in education is all based on some policy. So, they have raised the issue ok you are talking about wh what are the are the teachers doing a good job that is what they were asking, but that alone will not is not of a, a direct concern finally, have the student learnt something. So, it the outcome based education came because of that particular concern can we measure what the students have actually learnt. So, B is the correct answer. Question 9 accreditation of engineering programs was introduced to ensure graduates of all engineering programs can have good placements. Graduates of engineering programs have all the requisite characteristics of a good engineer and graduates of engineering programs have the required minimum knowledge of the branch they are graduating from and the <coughs> Programs have framework for an engineering teacher to plan and conduct his or her own courses. So, here once again none of the statements are completely inappropriate, but among the four obviously accreditation was introduced to ensure that the all the graduates have the requisite characteristics of a good engineer and they are further expressed in terms of program outcomes. Question 10 teaching is transferring information to learners in a formal setting that is true. The process of helping others to acquire knowledge skills and values that is also true. Demonstration of new knowledge and skills that is also true. Assessing this performance of the students is also true. So, among all that 
everything is included in in the in the uh, option b the process of helping others to acquire knowledge and skills and values is is what teaching is now let us go to uh, the quiz 2 Uh, this is where lot of uh, arguments went on to what category of knowledge does the element please look at element is the entire what is be given between the between the inverted commas stress is expressed in pascals it is a statement belong to whether what are these categories whether it belongs to all of them or which particular one the correct answer we gave it as factual and many people said the moment the word stress came they said that is conceptual stress if I ask independently of the other certainly it is a concept. But saying that stress is expressed in pascals is just a factual knowledge there is no uh, what do you call understanding argument it is uh, argument about it it is expressed in pascals I might have I may have another one stress is expressed in as uh, Newton's per meter square also which is nothing but Pascal. But if I write like that that also becomes a factual knowledge ok. I hope that answers are the doubts that people have about whether it is conceptual or factual. Metacognitive ability affects two of the following how well and how long students study, how well the students perform in the examinations, how much and how deeply students learn, how well the students pay attention to the teacher in the classroom. Once again all of them are not totally incorrect, but the most important uh, two statements two of the following as we said how well and how long the students study and how well the students pay uh, sorry how well how much and how deeply the students learn these are the two aspects that metacognitive ability uh, affects. Engineering is a process of investigation of how to solve technical and socio technical problems selecting if uh, the phenomenon phenomena for investigation establishing the validity of results applying science. In one sense engineer does all this all these four, but the most uh, but the total engineering activity is investigation of how to solve technical and socio technical problems. Pure technical problems and socio technical problems means many of the bigger issues bigger projects where the final product also interacts with the society. So, the socio technical interactions also start becoming problem issues to be addressed in an engineering problem that is why solve pure technical and socio technical problems is the major uh, is the process of engineer or engineering process. to what category of knowledge does the statement an air foil by virtue of its shape in particular to its uh, sharp trailing edge generates lift when inclined at an angle to the air stream belongs to. And this particular statement belongs to fundamental design principles and this is uh, why we call it until this design principle was invented not discovered uh, people were trying to imitate uh, the birds and uh, and trying to fly and imitate the birds, but that did not work until the this has been realized that unless you have something at a particular speed you have a lift generated because of the nature of the wing that you have that you can fly and this is not anything new physics at that time physics was known, but this is a, a design principle that can only can come 
for in a totally different way than compared to deriving from physics. Okay. And that is why we call it, it is called fundamental design principle. Every engineering branch will have a few such fundamental design principles. Whenever a new design principle is uh, invented, the whole the way the technology will evolve or that engineering will evolve will completely get transformed. Two of the following are non cognitive factors. Designing is certainly a cognitive factor that is what we have looked at uh, our Bloom's taxonomy and self concept is not strictly a cognitive factor. Differentiating as we said belongs to understand which is a cognitive factor and motivation. So, self concept and motivation are the two non cognitive factors. Identify two examples of affective behaviors from the following indicating attitudes of concern and responsibility, deciding what procedure to apply in a given situation obviously, deciding what procedure to apply belong to the apply category of cognitive domain. Giving multiple solutions to a given problem you can consider that belongs to the create category of uh, Bloom's taxonomy. Listen to listen to actually that can be slightly sentence can be improved listen to in interactions with others. Learning to listen is a major uh, thing that one should acquire. We all have habits where when the when other person is speaking halfway through the sentence you already start reacting to that. So, listening to others in uh, interactions is a very important characteristic of affective behavior. So, the in indicating attitudes of concern and responsibility listening to others in interactions with interactions are the two uh, examples of affective behavior. Question 7 perceive activate execute maneuver judge and create process processes belong to cognitive domain affective or feeling domain psychomotor domain or none of this. By the very words that you have execute maneuver those two words completely characterize uh, even activate they will tell you that it is um, it is psychomotor domain. Question 8 what is the condition in the course outcome statement process data in Hadoop cluster using Hive and uh, pick scripts. The question is correct and the answer also correct answer we said is also correct, but the problem was this particular issue was to be addressed in the fourth week and strictly the question belongs to the should belong to fourth quiz and to that extent one can consider it is a bit of out of syllabus for third week and that is the reason why we said that question could be excluded. But uh, possibly many uh, by the time uh, many of you have answered this question you have already uh, crossed the into fourth week and possibly could have uh, answered that, but still to give the benefit of doubt we said that question should be removed from the list. Nine, the besides the analytical tools quantitative data and practical considerations required for the tasks designers need to know how to carry out these tasks. How to employ procedures productively uh, constitutes an essential part of design knowledge is the goal of is it a fundamental design concepts criteria and specifications uh, practical considerations or design instrumentality. As we have defined design instrumentality refers to as per the Vincenti categories that the processes associated with actual process of design. When you are doing the design you are supposed to go through a certain processes as well as interact with others and how do you deploy in what sequence you do the whole 
bunch of knowledge that is required to execute something is uh, belongs to design instrumentality. Question 10, what are the, why are criteria and specifications important to engineering activity? And we said, we said select most important two. They provide the basis for organizing, or, uh, organizing development teams. They provide the basis for marketing a product. All engineering designs have to be done as per the given specifications. The cost of any engineering pro activity depends on specifications. Once again, all the four are uh, true with reg regard to criteria and specifications. But we said what are the uh, select the most important two that is engineering designs have to be done as per the given specification. There is no choice about it. Okay? You have to meet those specifications. This how the specifications are uh, decided brought about is a different story. But once the that decision has been taken, inge, all engineering designs have to be done to meet the specifications. And also the higher stricter the specifications, the cost of any engineering activity just goes up exponentially with the specifications. And that is how the two most important uh, aspects of engineering uh, criteria and specification are C and D. Some people argued they provide the basis for organizing development teams. That is true, but not as uh, important as C and D. Okay. That is the position taken. Now, coming to quiz 4, a well written course outcome can be measured by an assignment, test, project or examination. Never begins with vague verbs such as know, appreciate, understand and demonstrate. That was a, a blunder from my side. Understand and demonstrate are very clearly, they are not vague verbs as, as uh, we are concerned. Unfortunately, somehow those two words crept in and we were not, we, we could not, uh, we did not correct them which is uh, fault is totally mine. And uh, is free of ambiguous words and phrases, acronyms or industry specific jargon. Uh, we have all the, th all the th uh, these feature, all the three features are uh, part of well written course outcome statements. That means, they should be measured by an assignment or a test or project or examination. It should never begin with vague verbs, though the examples were wrong. He is free from ambiguous words and phrases. So, to that extent, all the three characteristics are uh, features of that. But the main error was second one was wrongly written. That is how we eliminated this question from consideration. Course outcomes help students creating a connection between teaching and learning, between teacher and students, taking much of the guesswork, uh, uh, guessing out of the students attempt to learn and enabling them to truly master the content of the course. So, the options given were A, B, C and all the three are none of them. And some people have argued in what way it uh, can create connection between teaching and learning between teachers and students. Right now, the, the current practice is the teaching and learning between teacher and students, the main connection is the syllabus that is given. Whether the syllabus is given by the teacher or not, it may be given by the university, it is printed somewhere and all that you have is half a page of list of topics and possibly the some list of textbooks. But what exactly to learn and what is the goal at each point that is not very, uh, that is still a bit of guesswork uh, that the students have to do. Of course, the students will talk to each other, talk to the senior students, 
and they try to take the guesswork out of that or look at the old exam paper, earlier exam papers and so on. But why should, why should it be left to that kind of exposure, that kind of interactions with others rather than teacher trying to say, trying to tell the students these are the expected outcomes from you. And the more clearly you write those statements, the less uh, guesswork that would exist. And also, it is also a kind of uh, a look at the, the, it depends on the way they, you write the statements. For example, you can truly master the content of the course trying to look at how each CO is written and whether you can solve problems of that type and that is how you can prepare and that is what is expected of you. All that, all the three are relevant and uh, that is what we said the correct answer. Though some, some participants had doubt about uh, the option A. Uh, what is the condition in the course outcome statements calculate major and minor losses associated with the fluid flow in piping networks? Once again the fault is mine, by mistake I have written it as uh, uh, piping networks first as a choice. Actually there is no condition here okay? and that is why this was excluded. Have practical experience of developing applications that utilize databases is presented as a CO, what is inappropriate about it? Incorrect action verb, too abstract, no learning product, represents internal change. Okay. So, what in our earlier examples, we have stated have should not be used is an inappropriate uh, action verb or incorrect action verb or represents internal change. But if you look at the total sentence, we are saying have practical experience. Practical experience is the, is the key word. Just you have practical experience, what do you want to do with that? You go and conduct some experiments in the lab or go and collect some data and but that is all. But there is no particular goal that is defined in this. What is it that you should be able to do as a consequence of uh, having practical experience? Uh, to that extent, it is not telling you what the learning product should be. So, that is considered as the most appropriate answer for this question. And what are the tags that need to be associated with a course outcome? We have given all combinations of that and I am sure many of you would have uh, answered correctly. That is a, every CO should be tagged with PO, PSO, cognitive level, knowledge categories, number of class hours and number of lab or field hours as the case may be. So, all of them should be, uh, should be used as tags. Why should a CO be tagged with PSO? I think there are also a few doubts expressed uh, with regard to this. PS, well, the question is why should a CO be tagged with PSO? PSOs are required to be attained as per NBA. Yes, that is true. NBA insists that PSO attainment should be computed. And PSOs are dominantly attained through courses. PSOs are identified by the department. PSOs have many cognitive dimensions. The C and D are merely some statements and not related to the question that is asked. And uh, first one only merely states that PSOs are required to be attained as per NBA. But when you talk, when you look at it from the point of view of CO, CO should be tagged with PSO otherwise you, your uh, COs have nothing to do with the PSOs. PSOs are supposed to characterize all aspects of your program take with respect to your specific program. And 
and as you know PSOs have to be dominantly attained through courses only and that is the reason why the uh, B is the co correct answer. Question 7 assessment pattern is defining the number of questions to be asked for each CO in all the assessment instruments. The first one is uh, the option is number of questions to be asked whereas, the expected class average performance in end semester examination that is not assessment pattern. The expected class average performance in the internal continuous evaluation that should have been written as CIE continuous internal evaluation by mistake the two words got interchanged and again by another mistake we put is uh, IES as the uh, as the acronym for it. The weightage for each CO in all the in, uh, instruments of IES or CIE. As you can see the number of questions is not the issue for each CO. For example, I can give one mark uh, questions for uh, for a particular CO and give five mark questions for for another CO. So obviously, we are we are indicating that the one CO is more important than the other. Whereas weightage for each CO, that means in a in a fifteen uh, mark uh, test or a hundred mark. Uh, end examination whatever way is that you do the how much weightage am I giving to each CO in all the instruments that I am using IES is really the assessment pattern. Attainment of a PO is considered to be 1. Now I can also it need not be 1 I can make it to 10 or 100 or whatever number that I want, but let us say we are uh, we are selecting as the we are um, setting it as the 1 as the goal. In such a case class average marks in the CO's associated with that PO is 100 percent. What does what does it mean? If everybody gets 100 percent marks of the CO's associated with that PO then only we want to consider PO A is considered to be 1. If the PO is addressed at the level of 3 and the class average marks of CO associated with that PO is 100 percent that is a second option. The strength to which PO is addressed is 3 if the targets set for CO are met. Obviously, B is the correct answer there are two aspects one is to what extent CO's have been attained and to what extent a PO to what strength a PO is addressed is a second aspect. So, th these two are combined in the statement B and B is the correct answer for that. Is it necessary to set the targets for all PO's at similar levels? Okay. Once again because of the NPTEL procedures uh, we are we had to remove uh, the uh, remove this particular question from consideration because we ended up having two correct answers which is again uh, my mistake I should not have given when we are asking for one or the only one answer is given. So, both uh, the C and B are correct answers all POs need not be addressed to the same level whereas, uh, no as no program can address all the POs equally and because of that you do not have to address POs at, at similar levels. Okay. Both B and C are the correct answers whereas, we try to say the tool will only because we have given only one as the correct answer it will not be able to uh, give marks for the other one. I should have given only one correct option. Finally, the last question why is closing the quality loop important? It is required by NBA accreditation process which is true 
it is required by NAC accreditation process that is also true. It ensures good teaching by the faculty indirectly it is valid. It leads to continuous improvement in the quality of learning and that is the most appropriate answer for the uh, question. Okay. So, that completes all the clarifications or elaborations of the answers for the three quizzes where several uh, issues were raised and we received several of them. Th we thank them for uh, raising these issues. We thought it is best to explain through this video uh, the answers to various questions and if there are any uh, what do you call either misunderstandings or opinions and I hope what I presented uh, will clear your doubts and present our viewpoint. And once again I am very sorry for the errors that have crept in crept into the question papers or quizzes. Thank you very much and happy learning.